Well, the boys have sure got themselves in a pickle now. <laughs> They're going to head down Larry's River. It just keeps going and going. My GoPro got picked off and got shot into the river. It's just a big blob of muscle, really. Ooh. guys Noah here with Northern Scavenger I got an email from one of our subscribers this past winter telling me about the real backwoods of Nova Scotia he was referring to it as the lost shore of Nova Scotia and apparently it has really good brook trout fishing and it's really remote in terms of people going back here it's about three and a half hours from the city and cannot wait for this So the specific route we're doing, we're gonna be just south of the Bonnet Lake Barrens Wilderness Area. And we're gonna sort of bushwhack our way through a couple lakes to Bonnet Lake and then finish the trip going down the Larry's River, down into the ocean. Don't know much information on this trip. There's a lot of blue lines. And typically in Nova Scotia, if you look at a blue line on a map, it's never a good sign. It's a lot of dragging, but the weather looks good this weekend. The brook trout should be biting and it should be a good time. All right, so we're at the takeout. I, th I think we found the lost shore. I think that's it. Right I reckon there. so. Not a whole lot of water coming down there. <laughs> So we're just at the takeout, transferring stuff over from Matt's car to my car. And then we're gonna head up to a couple still waters up, up river a bit. We still haven't really figured out exactly where we wanna put in. There's a couple options. We're just gonna look at the maps quickly to make sure we're not setting ourselves up for failure. But regardless, we're here, it's, it's early. We've got a full day ahead of us to get to Bonnet Lake. Should be good. There's no, uh, yeah, like no property number. Oh, buddy, this is People it. People definitely use it. What do you say? I think it looks good. The lost shore of Nova Scotia, here in the bog with Matt. <laughs> Loading the canoe, looking for some brookies, looking for some sun. We'll see what today has in store for us. So you're looking for sun? Looking for sun. <laughs> Let's see Tomorrow, it. Tomorrow, maybe. Holy Man. All the food of, that's in there, yeah, right? Yeah, all the food. We're eating well. It's too bad we forgot to bring beer. Okay, yeah, we're here for a good time, not a long time. So right off the bat, we're realizing this river is going to be pretty difficult. We expected this looking at the satellite images, that is really bony. For the next kilometer, it's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of dragging of the canoe. How much paddling do we do in that upper section? Uh, I think I could count the number of strokes on two hands and one foot. I think the river section was, I don't know, what was that, one or two K? Not a whole lot of paddling happened, but we're here, so. One kilometer, it took two hours to get there. So we made it to our portage, leaving the first lake. We had a quick bite to eat, and as you can tell, it's still raining. I'm having issues with the camera. I don't want to get it too wet, so I set up a nice little canoe canopy for us. The first scout of this portage, it is in really good condition. It's very open, a lot of caribou moss, almost like a 
It's like a barren lands. So we found our campsite. It took a lot longer than we expected. Looking at this lake from satellite imagery, it looked like all the shorelines were flat beaches. But in reality, they are slanted rocky beaches with very thick bush. So we spent a lot of time, probably about an hour or two, paddling around this, this final lake looking for a campsite. And we ended up finding a spot where we had to make work, which actually turned out to be not too bad. When we are on this final lake, we met up with Dave he um, he came in through a different route. We don't have any cell service out here, so we just kind of, we talked to Dave beforehand saying, hey, we're gonna be on this lake. We'll see you there. And sure enough, he just shows up. We see a red canoe in the distance, and we knew it was him. So we met up and we got to the site and we're just um, getting ready for dinner and enjoying this lack of rain now. It feels like for the last couple of months, it's been the same conditions, about six degrees in rain. But I think tomorrow it's supposed to be nice. Matt, what is on the menu tonight? So we're doing deer heart tacos. Okay, now I'm gonna mince up a little deer heart, mix it in with some ground venison, red pepper, onion, taco spice, and tortillas. What does deer heart taste like? Ah, uh, I don't know, like deer meat, but it's got like a different texture, like it's more firm, I guess. There's a deer heart. This is the heart from the uh, deer I shot this fall. We're gonna mince it up and throw it in with our tacos, along with about a pound of just straight up ground venison. So I did already, I don't like to freeze wild game meat with uh, too much fat on it. So before I put this in the freezer, I did kind of trim it up. It's just a big, big blob of muscle really. And then the game plan is just to slice it and mince it up into small enough pieces that we can kind of mix it in with our ground meat and into our tacos. Now, what do you think? Should we supplement or do straight deer heart? That's, that's a lot of meat. You don't think I need to add that? I don't think so. Okay. You have a, a handle for this thing, don't you? Uh, no. Guy? You don't? I thought you had a pot. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> deer heart, compliments brand taco seasoning, an onion and a red pepper. That's it. This is this your first time doing this? Uh, well, with your heart. Yeah. I'm gonna say you've got, I've never eaten a heart before. Yeah. I think we're there. I think we're ready. So we got deer heart tacos already, nice and hot. Set that over there, and then we rigged up a little warming contraption for our tortilla shells, because we're not barbarians. So a little bit of simmering water in the bottom, and then just put the tortillas in the lid of the pot, and they get nice and warm without getting burned. Got a taco meat and veggies. 
throw in some cheese. Wrap her up. Oh yeah. That's good. Oh yeah. Man, this is some this is some dense wood here. Yeah, that hardwood's nice. It's so nice. And finding hardwood in Nova Scotia is such a jackpot. Yeah. This train is so rugged. It's kind of or is it, is it a weather thing? Yeah. Is I don't it know. like the systems all come in maybe from the east here? It's it's way easier to appreciate how unique it is when the weather's nice. <laughs> when the weather was shitty, I, when the weather was shitty, I was kind of like, eh, it's all right. But now it's it's pretty sweet. I wonder if you can see the ocean from the top of one. I bet you you could. That's so. That ridge line over there. Hard to say. It looks easy to walk from here, but it's probably like alders this high. <laughs> it's all full of scrub. <laughs> gonna get in there and not be able to see a thing, but. <laughs> from here, it looks easy. What is up? We woke up to some beautiful weather. Just carried over from last night. Feels like a completely different month from yesterday. But there's not a cloud in the sky. It's already warm. Oh, it's gonna be a good one. I can feel it. I can feel it. A little bit of creative editing to make this one look good. That was way too slow, man. So you do it though. <laughs> too slow and then <laughs> fart noises at the end. Perfect. There we go. Good shameless plug. Shameless plug. There we go. What is Wild Northeast Outfitters? It's my guiding business. So backcountry uh, fly fishing for brook trout. Give me a call. Link in the description. After uh, the other weekend there when we caught a trout that puked up a smelt, I went back and added some purple to my zudlers. It's a halfway between a muddler minnow and a zonker. It's a red flash, purple marabou, hair's fur, and like a little bit of ice dub for the body there, and then deer hair. Cool thing about the deer hair is that is from the deer I shot this fall, which we ate for supper last night. It's the full circle. Got a whole school of them in there. All right, hot tip. I'm tying on a fly with a clinch knot. When you get to this stage, before you tighten it down, go like that and get that knot really wet so that it slides. Otherwise, when you tighten your knot down, It'll heat up the leader too much, and you might break off. It weakens it. There's two different dry things in here. I'm not too worried about it. Right through. It's an easy fix. I just don't have anything here to fix it with. What would you fix that with? Uh, like a PVC kind of patch, kind of like I have over here. So this one also needs to be replaced. But... Two wheel. We lost our mirror calm lake. These clouds make me nervous. Never trust a cloud. That's almost mackerel sky, which means 24 hours there's gonna be rain. Mackerel sky, is that what that's called? Yeah, like it it's almost looks like the clouds are curdling.
We've never been here before, so we're exploring the lake based on what looks interesting, what we think would look fishy. Any river or creek coming into the water, bubble streams, eddies. Yeah, I think we should be able to catch a few. What just happened there? First trout on the dry fly of the year. So Matt was throwing a, a, uh, a dry fly pattern that was a little darker. And I took a couple casts of this lighter mayfly pattern and we got a hit pretty quickly. So even though they are aggressively hitting the surface, you obviously have to match the hatch as they say. Matt, what is this long land mass that we're on right now? It seems like, if only there's a word to describe it. Like, it's this large accumulation of very, very small rock. This is wild. So we just been hanging out on this beach, had some lunch, and now we're gonna go explore the opposite side of this lake. The wind's picking up, there's white caps in the middle, but there's apparently a couple rivers coming in over those barren hills that we want to explore and possibly go for a hike. So when you're paddling in high wind situations across big lakes, you want to technically hit the wave at a 45 degree angle. For example, when we're like this, the wind, the wind is coming from here if we paddled across the lake like this, there'd be a lot of side rocking. And if a wave were to hit us when we weren't expecting it, there's a good chance that we'd fall over, or fall out of the boat. If we hit it straight on, you're battling the headwinds. But if you hit it on a 45 degree angle, the waves actually help you ferry your way across, and it's the lowest consequence for if you're gonna hit a big wave. So it is super windy out. We worked our way across this beach, just getting blasted by the wind. We checked out the shoreline over there that looked like there was some potential rivers to paddle, but they petered out pretty quickly. So we came back to the beach and now we're gonna look for a campsite for tonight. We're thinking the, um, the wind will die eventually, so being on a windy beach now doesn't necessarily mean we'll be on a windy beach tonight. keeps going. Yeah. So you can see the main lake way back there and then walking behind that beach there's all these raised ponds and they're all over the place at different levels too. Just keeps going. So the wind is still laid up, 
but we found ourselves a little nook behind the berm on the on the beach. Just needs to be cleared out a bit, but it is very protected from the wind, and I think this might be our home tonight. Just brute force. Zero technique, zero finesse, just 100% brute force. Just getting some materials together. I brought along this uh, 15 by 20 foot tarp because we knew we were going to be camping on this big sand beach. So I figured this is a great opportunity to make a, uh, a sauna, a trip, a trip sauna. So we're going to give it a whirl. We've got the fire lit, the rocks in there. Just going to build it up now and see what happens. Oh, hey. What's going on? I'm just sitting inside of my um, trip sauna here. I put uh, five sticks on the ground. Uh, as you can see here, you start them off, you put them on a bit of an angle so they're sticking out like this. So then when you pull them, they straighten out. It's going to be pretty cozy in here. It's going to be pretty small, pretty tight quarters. Now I'm digging a trench around it. The tarp's going to go over top. And the ends of the tarp are going to go into the trench and then we're going to bury the end. Dave, did you say you're also sleeping in here tonight? What's that? Did you say you're also sleeping in here tonight? Yeah, I'm also going to sleep in here afterwards, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty warm, it's dark, it's warm, it's uh, everything you want in a sauna. It's not super pretty from the outside, but she's going to do the job. It's going to work. Is this happening, Dave? I'm going to have a round at her, yeah. Alright. I'm going to have the smoke and figure out how to move these rocks, and then there's a whole dog and uh, there's water in there. Have you ever done this before? Have I ever moved the rocks with the... Fridge, no, done a sauna grill. before. <laughs> have you done that? I've never moved rocks with a fridge grill before. Do you have any bartending experience? Or waiting tables? Very, no, no. And you're working with weathered granite, Dave. Do you know that? No. It's not. It's a weird mistress, that weathered granite. Well, so far, so good. That's a good start there. What do you think? Three? Sure. Yeah. Let me stoke her back up. So you get that going. Someone order three granites. Three granites coming right up. Here at Northern Scavenger, we do not condone this sort of activity. Don't try this at home. Is this like a spiritual experience for you, Dave? Yeah. Watch those hot rocks right beside your foot. <laughs> <laughs> do you need me to hand the rocks to you? I think I got this. Yeah. Oh man, I can feel the heat coming off those. Is it really steamy in there? Oh, like ridiculous. Oh, oh, oh. There's no steam getting out. Dude. Say it again, what's it at? 35 degrees Celsius. Jesus Christ. Say it again. 45 degrees Celsius. Oh. oh. Follow up from the venison heart tacos last night. We got venison burgers.
Good morning, Bonnet Lake Wilderness Area! I feel like that was the intro to a Dukes of Hazzard episode. <laughs> well, the boys have sure got themselves in a pickle now. <laughs> They're going to head down Larry's River. Larry's River, we're coming for you. So what we're going to do is just have a, a brief morning at camp and try to get on the river earlier because we're doing a river where there's not much information on. We don't know how long it's going to take us. It's about eight kilometers from satellite imagery. It does look like there's some, some uh, white water. It does look like there's some rock. There's some pools. A little bit of a mixed bag. So we'll take our time, move down that river slowly but steady and get to the cars by tonight. You must be in heaven with that pole on this gravel. This is pretty nice. Dave, you want to explain what you're doing here? Canoe poling here. Okay. It's going downstream, so this is officially called snubbing. It's a really great way to get around because it changes your perspective, but it also increases your maneuverability. You just use a long spruce pole, spruce grow fairly straight, uh, take the knots off it. Make it about twice your height, so if you're six feet tall, 12 foot pole will do. And uh, go from there. New territory for us here, all new waters. We'll see what we see. Rock. You want to go right of that erratic rock and just wedge yourself in there. Wedge yourself in. are nice and mossy. It looks fun. I think it's this one. I think there's a line. Oh no. Yeah. Now we gotta get out here. Ah, there we go. So we just finished a pretty gnarly set and we got to a long still water that we'll be able to paddle for a little bit before going to the next um, sketchy section. 
When I say a sketchy section, I mean on a map here in Nova Scotia, if it's a blue line, it usually means there's a lot of dragging involved. And we have a blue line leaving this lake. But as we approached here, we had a little lunch and mayflies started to appear. Hopefully they start rising, we can get some good action. But they haven't yet. We also had an unfortunate situation. Matt broke the tip on his fly rod. But luckily he brought a second, so he's back in action. Oh, I think the river gods are redeeming me for my broken rod. Dude, look at the colors on this guy. Look like the size of his red spots. Nope. <laughs> Loser? It's all good. We're gonna let him go anyway, so. I did get a hand on him, so I'm gonna count that. Yeah, that's uh That's the one. Pulled out a couple fish on it so far. Just a tiny little black nymph with a bead head. That's like a like a mayfly nymph. We're seeing mayflies hatching all over the place, so uh, we weren't seeing a lot of rises though, so I figured a nymph would probably be a good idea. Three feet a liter, a little bobber, and basically just throw it out and dead drift it, and uh, wait till the bobber goes down. So I have some pretty bad news. We we're lining this set. We we're running this set and we had to go really close to the shoreline. And there's all these overhanging branches. And I was doing a brace and my GoPro got picked off and got shot into the river. It's my own fault. I was rushing it. I was rushing it and I, I didn't have it secure on my face. And we got into a situation where we just had to go. So, it is what it is. It's very unfortunate though. She big. This, this one's a little... No, it looks like a... Oh no!
up to over there, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Clear my way so that I can cut this bad boy out of the way. We just got down a very, very gnarly section. That was a lot of work. We dragged the boats for the last kilometer, but we finally made it to a still water here. Looking at a map, I think that's the hardest part of the day. I'm hoping so, because that was very long, very arduous work. But we've made it here. No injuries, no casualties. to the left of this rock, right here. as we can get. Essentially, like I'm gonna get past this one, two, three, four, five. Suck in. All right, let's do it. Not exactly clean, but it's a lot narrower than I expected. Safe if I if I send her down. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I think this is it, dude. Not bad. We got an hour to spare. <laughs> and a half hours on the water. That was a close one, but we made it. What time is it right now, Noah? Quarter to seven? Is that true? 20 to eight. It's 
20 to 8. Yeah, 20 to 8. 20 to 8. And what time does it get dark? I don't know, 8.30? Yes. One hour to spare. So we started on the water today probably about 9 o'clock in the morning. And it took us about 11 hours to go 8 kilometers. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them was the elevation drop. Another was the lack of water. Uh, third was the amount of sweepers. And fourth was just that we're on the lost shore and that's just how it goes out here. Well, that worked out perfectly. <laughs> Confirmed. That is the ocean. We did it. Oh, hell yeah. Man. We have to save that day. Boom, c'est fini. <laughs> and cut. Overall, the story still holds true. If you look at a map and there's a blue line, expect it to be hard regardless of how many rivers merge into the blue line, how many lakes are in the headwaters, a blue line is never gonna be an easy time. Never trust a blue line here in Nova Scotia.